He has been the athletic director at UCLA since 2020 after spending some time at Boston College as the AD there. And then uh, two other schools, <laughs> Ohio State and Michigan State. He is UCLA's <laughs> Martin Jarman back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Martin? I'm good, brother. How are you doing? So you got your good parts from Boston College, right? Like that, like when you make great the great place. decisions for UCLA, like it's a Boston College decision. Great place. And the love, other ones when you're, second, when, when you're second guessing yourself and you're wondering, <laughs> why would I think that? That's that's from your experience at Michigan State and Ohio State. No, that's that's from my dad. The good stuff from my mom, the bad, the bad decisions from Very my dad. Very good. Man. Sorry, dad. Very good. No, I love that. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fine. I'm doing uh, so. Let, let me just jump directly right in. Jump directly. Let's in. jump directly right in. You're you're seeing what the Pac-12 is going through right now. What do you think of it, Martin? Uh, when you see this, I have a lot of thoughts about that. What I don't you, know if we have enough time. Well, but, what are you what are you willing to share with well, us here? I just think that um, you know, first and foremost, you never want to see. Um, people in a challenged situation like like some of my colleagues are mm -hmm. now. You know, it's been a great conference, and, you know, um, that's unfortunate. And at the same time, college athletics is changing so much, and I think that's part of that change. And when you see consolidation, mm -hmm. you see some of the things that are trending, um, you know, it's just unfortunate that I think that over a number of years um, has led us to this point. Right. And so wh why did – Based on what you're seeing, other schools have now followed suit. Obviously, mm -hmm. your UCLA and USC made the move last summer, and you've been kind enough to come on the show after that just to relive it, seeing what's happening right now. Why did UCLA make the move that it made to the Big Ten? Yeah, it's about where college athletics is going. You know, you want to be in a conference uh, that has significant reach. Mm -hmm. You want to be in a conference that has resources, and you want to put your student athletes in positions to be successful. And to do that, you've got to, you've got to, you know, you've got to be with other big brands that are doing great things, and that's what the Big Ten is. And so, from my standpoint, you know, UCLA is all about championships and the student athlete experience. We have the second most national championships in the country, 121, mm -hmm. which, by the way, we won two last year. And uh, and congratulations, thank you, sir. You're Appreciate welcome. that. And. Um, and so when you come to UCLA, you come to get a high level of athletic competition and the number one public institution in the country, academic. So you want to be in that environment where you want to compete against the best, play against the best. And oh, by the way, um, your brand and your platform and the national level of exposure that you get from a conference like the Big Ten is significant. We're in the NIL world also, which is great. But all of those factors... Uh, contributed to us saying, look, how can we best position our athletic program to be one of strength? And you see, as you've seen in the past year, a lot of people are looking at their program and looking at the future and saying, hey, where do we want to be? Mm -hmm. What makes sense? And a lot of people want to be with the Big Ten. And there's a reason for that. Because that conference has great institutions, high academic, high athletic. And um, from a demand standpoint, people want to see good on good. They want to see great competition, and that's what consumers want, and that's why you're seeing what you're seeing. So uh, I've got Martin Jarman, the UCLA athletic director here in studio. So, again, what you're willing to share and have a conversation here in front of everybody, um, what, what, what wound up being the vote of no confidence ultimately in the Pac-12? So this past think? year, we haven't... I haven't been in the room. You have no. Ever. You've been out. I mean, I've but, been out but, ever since we. But obviously, if UCLA and USC had not made the move that it made last year, do you think the Pac-12 would be in the current state that it's in right now? I don't know. That's that's a tough one because I'm not in the room when decisions are made. I think I think in leadership roles, you know, you don't you don't know the shoes that people walk in. You mm -hmm. don't know what kind of decisions or, or what the process is. Yes. So it's just stuff that we read, and you can't believe everything you read or hear. What I do know is um, I think over a course of years, there are moments where you can make strategic decisions, mm -hmm. and you can go this way, you can go that way, and you've got to get more of them right than wrong. And I think in, in the Pac-12's situation, there were some market things that occurred, but also some decisions that could have been made um, that just didn't go – that, their way prior you know? to your tenure and arriving on campus yeah, I, at think it's, I think it's a number of years right um it, it, something just doesn't happen overnight right but but um and some things are out of your control too let me say that um you know you just you just don't know but 
The one thing I do know in leadership roles, you got to be in tune with two things. You got to be in tune with the people you serve. Mm -hmm. How are people feeling about things? Where are you at? And then you also got to be in tune with the marketplace. You know, what's going on in the market? Where is it going? And um, and and that's those are two significant things that any leader um, has to do. And I think that, you know, this it's just been a challenging environment for for the conference. All right. One more on the past. And then I want to talk about, you know, what happens from here. Best everyone's kind of figuring this out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Right. So the fact that it, it, it's possible because it sure looks like the pack 12, 10, eight, whatever you want to call it from its history Mm -hmm. is dissolving. It's, or it's devolving right now. It's changing. It's changing. Could be evolving or, or it could be, or it could be disappearing. And so, and, and, and when you take a look at the records from the history of this conference, Yeah. It's your school that kind of leads, with all due respect to USC and basketball, mm-hmm. from UCLA basketball. I mean, Jackie Robinson, for crying out loud, mm-hmm. went to UCLA. Arthur Ashe. We could keep going on, yeah, right? We could. Like we, we could. could. <laughs> what happens to these records? I mean, has there been some sort of conversation? I, obviously, they're always going to be UCLA's, but you can't talk about them in terms of Big Ten records, right? Like what? What happens? Yeah, you know, we always will keep that and cherish that at UCLA. Right. I mean, obviously, from a conference perspective, though, that I don't know. You know, that's one of those. I've never seen this. You know, you're we're seeing this live happen, right? Right. Um, and we haven't been UCLA haven't been in the conversations or meetings with the Pac-12. So, so I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. What I do know is you you can't take what has been accomplished away, and we've had great Bruins that have done significant things, not only in the college athletic space, but go on in the world. And that doesn't change just because of a conference shifts or changes its membership. That's always a part of the college athletics and part of UCLA or whatever school that you're representing. Martin Jarman of UCLA Athletics, the AD right here on the Rich Eisen Show. So now that Oregon and Washington are Mm -hmm. part of the Big Ten, which just blows my mind, (laughs) it it really does. You know, like Northwestern and the Big Ten, there's now two schools from the actual Northwest. Well, it's like last year when we were here, you know, we were talking about us. I know. You know, I was asking if you're getting cold weather gear ready (laughs) and stuff like that. That's right. That's right. So, so how, again, the first blush thoughts and conversations is there going to be like a Western division of the Big Ten, certainly for your travel issues, potentially. Yeah. Is, it, is there going to be something like I don't, that? I don't know. We don't know. We're still having meetings now because, you know, everything happens so fast. Yes. We literally had the football schedule done for 24 and 25, mm-hmm. and now that's going to change because Oregon and Washington are coming in. And by the way, I think this is great that Oregon and Washington are coming in, you know, to have a better West Coast presence, and that allows all of our sports to continue to play Washington and Oregon, two great brands and and uh, they compete at the highest level. I think that helps us on the West Coast, quite frankly. So I, I think it's good. We still have to figure that out with the scheduling piece and how the Big Ten is going to look at, um, you know, they'll probably utilize some travel partners. That's something we've talked about. The Big Ten hasn't done that usually before. Pac-12 has. I think you can see that more happening mm-hmm. uh, with some of our sports. But uh, we should be, hopefully we'll get some some clarity on on football scheduling, those kind of things next couple of weeks. So the football schedule that came out and I'm sitting here wondering, you know, when Michigan's coming <laughs> yeah, out we're here. going to the big house. Uh, you're going to come. You're uh, going to get on the team playing. So man. when you're saying that, in, so that's now null and void? Uh, it's going to change. We just don't know yet. How? Because Oregon and Washington are coming in now. No, no, so I said, but gotta, you don't know how it's going to Oh, yeah, change, we don't know how it's going to change, yeah. So we have part, of it might have, might, part of it might be still uh, intact or all of it might still be intact? How, or how about this? What parts do you want to be intact? So we were playing at Michigan. <laughs> nice. you, want, you want your alma mater to come well, to the Rose I mean, Bowl I, I, now? I, I you want me get, to ask? I can, I can ask Tony. I don't, I don't want to get on a plane. Tony, I'll ask Tony to. <laughs> I don't want to get on a plane. <laughs> see if by we the way, get he, that hot, done. He, was, he was the first. He's great, by the way. He's, Tony Petiti has been phenomenal. He's, he's excellent. He hired me in 2003. As soon as I left ESPN, he was the second call I got. No way. Yeah to hire me at CBS, so I've known Tony forever. He's wow, smart, so he's, you didn't blow up his career. He's clearly, that's correct. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I would say he's clearly a smart man. He is. He's, he's he a is, wise he is man. on it, man. He's a wise man, and obviously you need to have somebody who's well-versed in the television world, since that, since that money does appear to be driving a lot of the decisions that you and your, the school it's presidents important. are making right it's now. It's important. All your, all your partnerships are important. Your media partners, donors, sponsors, it all supports 
the gets the resources to to give student athletes the best experience we can and, and compete at a high level. So, what, what about the, if you will, non major revenue sports? Uh, are you going to have UCLA teams travel all the way to Piscataway and Maryland and like I, I, it, what's going to happen? How how is this going to work? Because it sounds like a professional sports league. I'll be straight on so, with you here. So we're gonna we we don't have any of the schedules yet finalized from the Big Ten. But from, from but any sport. For any sport, right. We're we're working through that. But but a couple of the things that we talked through during the process of UCLA and USC joining were principles that we both share to make it um, a better situation from a travel standpoint. Yes. So so for example, um, men's soccer last year took four away trips. There most of our teams are gonna do the same amount of away trips or one less in some instances. So if they had four away trips last year, in their first year in Big Ten competition, they're going to have four, maybe even three. Mm-hmm. Now, the distances are longer, and that's where we got to come in to try to mitigate that. What can we do to, to shorten that time um, on the road? But but from a travel trip standpoint, if you're taking four trips a year and now you're going to take four or three, that's the same, right? And now with Oregon and Washington, you know, does that impact one less trip to the East Coast? You know, those are all things that we got to talk talk about and talk through. And then, by the way, you know, we haven't had situations in college athletics many times where you have multi-team events. Um, sometimes in the preseason, you'll have them like softball, baseball. We'll have a tournament where it's a lot of teams. You're going to probably see more of that, not just in the Big Ten, but I think in college athletics where you have multi-team huh. events, same place, and you knock a couple games out. Yeah. So you're going to do some of that stuff. Like but, a, like, a, like everybody meets, say, in, yeah. in Indianapolis yeah, or something? something like that. Yeah, there are a couple cities you can do. You can – everybody meet in L.A. Chicago. or Arizona or, or Chicago. Obviously. Yeah, and and um, especially – you're talking about the Big Ten when, it's, when the weather is a little more challenging in some of the outdoor sports. I can see that now being a West Coast presence. Come on out here. Come on out here. Why what, not? What about the Rose Bowl being an actual Big Ten championship game? Oh, that would be cool. Well, I mean, that would be cool. And you know, a Western division. You know, that could, Tony, you, you you should you should push that. I, I mean, well, no, I, I I might have just lost my reservations <laughs> in Indianapolis for the combine, but but that's what I'm sitting here thinking is I'm obviously thinking um, Big Ten teams mm-hmm. certainly for basketball, mm-hmm. a West Coast swing. Yeah, Washington and Oregon, yep. and then both teams here in Los Angeles. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a possibility you point out there's no real maybe East Coast swing since everybody is from the Midwest East mm-hmm. a- outside of the four schools I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, that you do meet in a spot like Chicago or Indianapolis or something that's more centrally located than, say, the Eastern st- uh, Seaboard. These are things that are still all being discussed, is what you're saying. Absolutely. Right I mean, if you look at the Big Ten, I know they've moved their basketball tournament around. I believe the, the men's basketball tournament is going to be in Minneapolis, I think, this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times it's been in Minneapolis. So, you know, you've seen the championship game move around, the, the basketball tournament move around. So I, I, I would anticipate that that'll be a, a conversation at some point. But it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's going to be future opponents that we haven't played a lot. Um, but when we have played against Big Ten competitions, we've been successful. And again, I, I know you're an athletic director at a member school, and I'm potentially asking <laughs> a school president, if not Commissioner Petiti, question. But what about Stanford and a fellow UC school in Berkeley yeah. right now? Are they they're they're kind of sitting out there, right there in a major market of the United States of America? Is there a conversation about Big Twenty? Is there you know, making this the big that's, 20? That's a question for Tony. Okay. Um, but what I what I can tell you is yes. you know, both of those are phenomenal institutions. And and I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm hoping that they land in a great spot. Uh, we want to continue at UCLA. We want to keep playing them. I've told both Stanford and Cal that, that we want to continue that competition. Even if they're out of conference. Right, even if they're out of conference. Um, that's something that's important to us. We have a great history with Cal and with Stanford um, and, and obviously a, a, a stronger connection with Cal. So that's really important. Um, so they've got to figure that out. You know, they're working through that. I know um, in the realignment space, that, that takes up a lot of time and energy and effort, and it's a lot of phone calls, and it's a lot of strategy. So I know they're in it right now. Mm-hmm. I just hope that they land in a good spot. Well, th- those are my questions on my plate. What's on What's on your plate right now as you're getting set for uh, another football playing season, obviously, football. And, and everything? Football, else? man. 
Yeah, it's um, it's an exciting time. You know, we DTR uh, just played a heck of a game. How last about night. that? He's been playing really well in the he's preseason. He's been playing really well. He's he's. I, I watched some of that game against Philadelphia. I think yes. yesterday, right on NFL Network. I on appreciate NFL, your on NFL Network. This is not my only home. But yes. Yeah, <laughs> he was making some phenomenal plays in Bruins. We've seen that for for years. Yeah. Chip Kelly made the comment that that we'll have a new starting quarterback for the first time since uh, George H W Bush. You know, because DTR <laughs> was there DTR. was there for so long. He has man. been a while. But yeah, he's phenomenal. Char- Charbonnet he's looks pretty sharp Charbonnet up there looks in great. Seattle. Uh, Jake Bobo, I saw him okay, make a yeah. couple plays. Like, okay. we got a lot of guys. We got eleven or twelve guys that are that are playing well in camps right now. So, a lot of talent. A lot of talent, man. This is going to be the last UCLA USC game, and and wow. that's not a Big Ten. I just it's gonna be weird. I'm sorry. It's like that's a big that's a the, big ten the, game. The, the that's game like, will still be the same. The passion will still be the same. Oh, I know yeah, that. The game will be the same, man. You know, I it'll know. just have a different patch right there. That's it, it. I got it. I hear yeah. you. So when when are we gonna get the scheduling? When are we gonna get like I know this just happened. I understand it, but where this is <laughs> you this want is it a, right now? Yeah, I do. I do. Like I, I want to know. It can't just be an 18 team mosh pit and the top two teams make the Big Ten championship game. You can't. That can't be that. I don't know. We, right? we haven't had a meeting yet since. Oregon and Washington. We're going to have one, I think, next week. So okay. we'll start talking about these things. Do you want me on the Zoom to make some suggestions? You know, <laughs> I might try to see if we can get you get Just you plugged in. in. Maybe not on the Zoom, but but um, I could, no, maybe I, I could start. Call, maybe I can leave the meeting and call you and get your input. No, uh, but he's you already. Know? I should start the Zoom. I'll leave. <laughs> you know, I'll leave. You can kick Rich, me out of the Zoom. Excuse you from the Zoom. Oh, no, oh. you need a Big Ten guy to just <laughs> kick it all off. A West Coast living Big Ten guy to kick it all off. Just let everyone know. Yeah. Yeah. We got to do something special when we play Michigan. I'll put Gene Smith on mute. Is that wrong? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, rivalries are rivalry. I understand. Um, you know, <laughs> well, we put him on mute the last two Novembers. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Why am I dragging Martin into he this? He has nothing to do nothing. with this. I got nothing Sorry. to do with that, man. But it's I'm excited of- about the football season, though. We got, yes. we got, get this. Yes. We got 22 graduates on our football team. Okay. 22 guys that have already got their undergraduate degree. Okay. How about that? So we're mature. Okay. A little older experience. Okay. And then we're going to have some new starters. So it's exciting. Okay. You got your favorite. What's what's the favorite Chip Kelly story you got for me that you can share? Give me one. That story he's told. What do you got? I mean, this is, this is a guy. A, a, a 30 for 30 on this guy would be outstanding. You got a good one for me? And then I'll... I'll send you back up the 405. You know what? I don't, before I don't, traffic gets crazy on a Friday. I don't know which to pick. Chip Chip is amazing, and Chip is funny. Chip is funnier than what people think. Mm-hmm. He's 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 hilarious. Mm-hmm. But I'll, I'll tell you, just this week, earlier this week, we had um, a donor dinner. It was okay. a football kickoff, 250 people. Sure. And a couple of the f- football student athletes come, and, and all the coaches, assistant coaches, and Chip talked, right? Yes. So. I'll get up there, I open it up, and I'm thinking, like, what am I going to say? And I and I talk about a situation that happened uh, right before I came up to the event. I was in this parking garage on campus, and um, I hear this car behind me just keep starting, keep starting the car, and it's not starting. Engine's not turning. Engine's not turning. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I wish I had some jumper cables to help. But I got to get up here. I don't have any any jumper cables. And so as I'm walking out of the parking lot, as I get to the steps, all I hear is, Thank you, God. Yes, yes. Thank you, God. And then, and I hear, and I hear an engine, mm-hmm. and I couldn't believe that it 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 worked. So I I like kind of ran back to just see, and I couldn't see him who was in the car, mm-hmm. but I saw the car like started, and they were like celebrating. So I, I told this story, and mm-hmm. I said, moral of the story is you got to hang in there. You got to keep going and keep trying, yeah. and it's gonna turn for you. You just got to hang in there. Mm-hmm. So. Everybody claps. I get done. So Chip comes up after me, and um, he says, uh, boss, where you at? And I was actually in the back. I was trying to get something mm-hmm. to drink. And he said, um, what Martin didn't tell you guys is I was in that car. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was like, and it was hilarious, you know? It'd be just like that. But that's him. He's like, boom. That All was right. him. D- d- what's Chip driving? What's I don't know. I don't think he was driving what I saw. Okay. I don't think so. But right. he said that was him. All right. But it was great. That's that's Chip right there. Okay. That's Chip Kelly. <laughs> uh, Martin, thanks for the time here. Yeah. I appreciate you uh, you know, coming down here. I got to ask you to come to a game, too, just like you did last year. Yes. Wh- wh- which one? Which one am I coming to? Which one do you want to come to? I don't know. We, um, we play I- uh, Colorado the 28th, oh, October 28th. Prime. Prime. Coach Prime. Okay. Winner. 
That's like it. that one? Rip That's the it. knob off. I want to see him anyway. <laughs> there oh, you yeah. go. I'll call. He, I won't even tell him I'm coming. <laughs> I won't even tell him I'm coming. Yeah. Because if, 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 if he fights, we all fight, right? Isn't that what he said? <laughs> yep. That's what I saw? That's what he okay. said. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on, Martin Jarman, everybody. The athletic thanks director. For eight, eight claps all around for, uh, for the UCLA uh, AD right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.